Well, this, of course, is a balloon full of helium. And this is also a balloon full of helium. It's just not floating because it's much bigger. And I'm going to trigger this here and start a compressor that eventually will empty the helium out. This balloon stores the helium that is boiling off of the liquid helium in the magnet behind us. That liquid helium is keeping that superconducting magnet in that nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer at 4 degrees Kelvin. That's about 452 degrees Fahrenheit below zero really cold. But helium is an increasingly precious commodity and we're trying to capture every little bit of it we can and recover it so that we can conserve this precious resource. Did I trigger it yet? So from the balloon in the other room, the helium comes in through a pipe over here on the wall and hits this compressor behind me. That compressor takes it up to about 300 pounds per square inch and puts it in these tanks. That's just to store it, keep the volumes lower than they would be if we were storing in big balloons everywhere. We take the 300 psi helium and still a gas and bring it over here into this thing, which is a helium purifier where the helium essentially is cooled to liquid nitrogen temperatures, still a gas, and that's designed to get rid of all the impurities, the nitrogen, the oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, whatever might be it snuck into the system, get rid of it. We want pure helium that's then going to go into this compressing unit here. So this is another doer in which liquid helium is stored. It's nearly full right now, as you can see it here on the screen. But this has what's called a cold finger. This is a compressor too, but it's a little bit different a compressor. It actually uses helium as a refrigerant. So we cool, compress helium, let it expand to cool it to below four degrees Kelvin. And the helium gas comes in here and it condenses on that cold finger right up in here, drips down into this newer. Eventually, this will fill up and we'll transfer it into a newer here that we can slowly move around take it back over to the magnets, refill them, and start the whole thing over again. So as you can see, all of the helium that used to be in here has been compressed, and it's stored over in the medium pressure cylinders across the hall. But it's going to be ready pretty soon to put in one of these magnets and keep it cold. Uh, right now, this one's running, and you can see here a data being collected on this 500 megahertz uh, in a bar. This is a, uh, a what's called a free induction decay. So this is watching the radio frequencies that are being emitted as the nuclei flip back to their lower energy state after they've been bombarded with uh, radio frequency waves that can flip them in the other way. Uh, that the frequencies that are associated with this let us figure out what the chemical environment is of each nuclei, exactly how many electrons are around it, how close it is to other ones, and so on. And that's how we solve structures of everything from simple molecules, like say penicillin or other antibiotics, to great big complicated proteins like we would solve in, in these magnets here, and figure out what they look like.